China has a load of questionable debt in its financial system. This is offset by US's enormous heap of dodgy debt floating around. Fortunately for both, Europe is drowning in unmanageable debt and Japan's being crushed by unpayable mountains of debt. Meanwhile, developing nations are being strangled by impossible loads of debt. Debt is money and money is debt, so it's all good. All the central banks have to do is lower interest rates and provide more liquidity, thus spurring more debt creation and encouraging more investment in productive enterprises that will sprout as green shoots and soon blossom into full-fledged prosperity for all. We are running a core cash deficit in his trade war in addition to world debt, deficit devaluation, fiat reserve currency, mechanism again for the hosting cooked books, fiat deficit debt slaves nation state, which is a war upon American people. Ex-President Trump was lining up all bona fide working and saving Americans in front his domestic debt deficit, financial fiat firing squad with his friend's China failure. The only war is the national old world order, King's Bank, monetary theory fraud, fiat debt deficit devaluation against the bona fide working and saving American people with the world's reserve currency. The US has to cut rates and start printing soon to join in the fun race to the bottom. Does anyone, I mean anyone, believe the Fed cares about the best interest of the nation? Does anyone believe that a small group of self-interested maggot bankers who get huge speaking fees should set short-term treasury rates? Does anyone believe that the Fed isn't politically biased? Fake money, fake debt, fake news, fake markets, fake laws, fake leaders, fake elections, fake investments, fake everything. That's what we really have. The chains of slavery, represented by that debt-based fiat are very, very real instead. The central bank has been doing exactly what it was installed for. Creating massive bubbles then bursting them so the overlords could buy up all the failed institutions for pennies on the dollar. Hopefully, someone will remember history if we don't destroy ourselves completely. Over the last 150 years, the West has gone from human slavery to debt slavery. The end game commenced a long time ago. The City of London does not care about getting repaid. It simply offers credit created by the borrower's promise to pay, which in turn must be collateralized with real wealth. Just pay the interest. The bankers are happy. Don't pay, and the bankers foreclose on your country and steal its resources and all available wealth of the population, and enslave it. The bankers who gathered on Jekyll Island in November 1910 were totally aware of the importance of controlling the country's money, and that was the objective of their infamous secret meeting which laid the foundations to the Fed. The Fed is officially the central bank of the USA but it is a private bank, owned by private banks and for the benefit of private banks and bankers. By controlling a nation's debt, they control the government and its laws. Give me control of a nation's money, and I care not who makes the laws. They will come for your 401k first, no cash out, mandated US Treasury holding, annuity only payouts, for your protection of course, and most sheep will accept it. Social security has no money. Workers pay FICA taxes to the social security admin, and the social security admin turns it over to the US Treasury. In return, the US Treasury gives the social security admin an IOU. So there is no pile of money sitting somewhere. Just IOUs. Debt slavery is now a chronic condition in which the world finds itself in. The word debt has the same roots as death and clearly has very dark connotations. Slavery means being owned and controlled by someone. What the bankers started on Jekyll Island has now enslaved the world in a debt and death grip from which there is no escape. Global debt of $230 trillion plus unfunded liabilities and derivatives takes us to over 2 quadrillion debt and liabilities is just too big a weight to get rid of. That's why we had to cut interest today, got to kick that can down the road. Predict negative interest rate policy coming to a Fed branch near you. It means you will be charged excessive amounts to keep money in the bank. Some advice from my grandfather. The ground does not charge you to store gold and silver. Brilliant man, indeed. Welcome back to the Atlantis Report. You are here for your daily dose of the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Please take a second to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and don't forget to also hit the notification bell. Thank you. Global debt has surged by over $15 trillion since 2019, hitting a new record of over $272 trillion in Q3 2020. 
As the fiscal response to the pandemic continues, the IIF expects global debt to hit $277 trillion, 365% of GDP. Debt outside the financial sector on track to hit $210 trillion, 274% of GDP, this year, up from $194 trillion, 240%, in 2019. Emerging market debt, X financials is fast approaching 210% of GDP, up from 185% in 2019 and 140% a decade ago. Sharply declining revenues have made debt service much more onerous for emerging markets governments, despite low borrowing costs. Some $7 trillion of emerging market bonds and syndicated loans come due through end 2021, 15% of that in US dollars. Debt to GDP ratios has gone parabolic. The pace of global debt accumulation has been unprecedented since 2016, increasing by over $52 trillion. While some $15 trillion of this surge has been recorded in 2020 amid the pandemic, the debt buildup over the past four years has far outstripped the $6 trillion rise over the previous four years and over earlier comparable periods. There is significant uncertainty about how the global economy can deleverage in the future without significant adverse implications for economic activity. If the global debt pile continues to grow at the average pace of the last 15 years, our back-of-the-envelope estimates suggest that global debt could exceed $360 trillion by 2030, over $85 trillion higher than current levels. It's almost like we need a great reset. Or something. A trillion here, a trillion there, and pretty soon, you are talking about real money. We are talking about toilet paper with a string of zeros printed on it. The nature of money has already changed. We're in modern monetary theory land now. What do you think all these COVID payouts, social program spending, and stock market levitations are? Stock levitation also pumps up the hoi polloi's 401ks. What better way to inject digital cash directly into their retirement accounts? Meanwhile a new report suggests Russia has been considerably successful in its pledge to remove the US dollar from trade with others, adding that the greenback has been replaced by local currencies in nearly half of Moscow's transactions with leading partners India and China. The report said that Russia had been paid back in its national currency ruble in more than 75% of its exports to India. Russia's trade settlements with China were also shifting toward a pattern of using currencies other than the US dollar, adding that rubles and euros were now the dominant means of such settlements with Beijing. It added that the share of the US dollar in Russia's settlements with India and China had reduced from more than 87% in the first three months to less than 48% in the similar period this year. Russia's success in de-dollarizing the economy comes as the greenback has traditionally dominated Moscow's trade with leading partners. The report said that the use of local currencies instead of the dollar in Russia's trade with other countries had quadrupled early this year compared to the same period last year. It also added that Russia was moving quickly to ditch the dollar from trade with the European Union countries. The report comes against the backdrop of efforts by Russia to make its economy immune from the impacts of sanctions and punitive measures adopted by Trump. Russia and countries like China, Iran and Venezuela, who have suffered from US sanctions, have repeatedly declared that they want to fully ditch the greenback from their economic interactions with the rest of the world. Last year a huge bombshell dropped after a $5.4 billion deal for Indian to acquire the S-400 systems from Russia was clinched during Putin's two-day visit to the country in early October 2018. The contract was settled in rubles as part of Moscow's broader policy and pursuit of de-dollarization of the Russian economy. It's a one-two punch in the face for the US if the US had the best missile technology, then India would be buying from the US instead and wouldn't need to worry about what they are able to purchase with their dollars. However, Russia has surpassed the US in missile technology. So, naturally, military arms customers, such as India, would want the best for their money. And, in order to buy what they need, they would want their money to be liquid, without fears of repercussions, like sanctions, or restrictive actions from the US so, the Russian ruble or the Chinese yuan, would be the obvious alternatives, and there is not a thing the US can do about it, except throw temper tantrums. Now, if Russia, rublized, the arms import-export trade, much like what the US did to dollarize the oil trade, the US would be in deep trouble, because the number one export product that keeps the US economic buoyed up is in military sales. 
Trading between the BRICS countries has surged 30%, according to reports and is now the engine of growth in the global economy. What this means is that the bulk of the economy and the system that facilitates the global exchange of goods and commodities is now in the hands of multilateral entities that are outside of the control of the American banks. The US dollar reserve was weaponized by Obama and Trump with sanctions. This posed a national security risk for all other nations of the world. The US dollar is now slowly being removed as the reserve and trade currency. The Russians are de-dollarizing because they realize, as JP Morgan realized, that gold is money and nothing else. This was the Atlantis report. Please like. Share. Leave me a comment. Subscribe. And please take some time to subscribe to my backup channels, I do upload videos there too. You'll find the links in the description box. You will also find a PayPal link if you want to make a donation. Thank you wholeheartedly to all those of you who have already donated. Stay safe and healthy friends.